my name is Russell Wolf, and with this video, we will be exploring what it takes to become a Resna certified ATP. Now, I know most of you are probably wondering what Resna is or what ATP is, so we'll jump right in. Uh, Resna stands for the Rehabilitation, Engineering, and Assistive Technology Society of North America. ATP stands for Assistive Technology Professional. So to explore this subject further, as you can see, I've typed in RESNA, R-E-S-N-A, into a Google search. I did a search, and the first result is Welcome to RESNA, RESNA.org. So this is the website that we will want to explore this subject. We'll just click on that. And here we go. Here's the Resna website. This is the official website. Make sure it's resna.org. You'll see a little bit about Resna itself, the, uh, what the acronym stands for. You can do a little search and see about the certification, accreditation, and so forth. What we're going to be speaking about is the certification of ATP. Easy enough. You go down to certification, come down one spot ATP general info and with a single click it'll bring us to a new page and that page will give us the general info that we're looking for. As you can see it'll give you a general definition of assistive technology professional and talks about the certification. So we're going to do just a little bit of exploring about this. The first thing we're going to click on is we're going to do about the exam. It gives you an idea of what the exam is it actually has 200 questions. It's a four hour exam. And if you do fail the exam, you can, uh, you have to wait 90 days before you can take the exam again. And with that, you can actually, you'll be able to take the exam at a reduced rate. So that's, that's a little bit about of what the, the exam is or the number of questions. We're just going to do a little bit of a back click there. And we're going to come down to the uh, eligibility, who can actually take the exam. So single click there. And if you scroll down, you will see that for spring of 2019, so this is for this year, this was what was required to actually sit for the exam. You would have to have a degree in this or all the way down to a high school diploma, plus the AT training and ed education plus work experience. So for those of us that are taking a course in say Masters of Education with an emphasis in assistive technology, that would be considered a master's degree. We would still need a thousand hours within six years of work experience within the field to actually sit for the exam. Now, again, we're just going to do a single click back and let me point out that this exam is extremely difficult um, and I want to show you exactly how difficult so we're going to go over to the statistics here the ATP statistics and that actually shows you how many people have taken the exam and what the pass rate was so if you look in 2018 there were 378 people who actually sat for the exam and only 55 percent of those passed it and at the end of 2018 they had just over 4,000 people certified as ATPs. Now, what about this exam? What does it actually cover? That would be a question I would want to know if I'm going to take the exam. Luckily, right below ATP, we have the ATP exam outline. One click there, and it gives you a little bit of information on what it covers. If you scroll down even further, it'll give you a percentage of what will be on the exam. So assessment, assessment of needs, approximately 30% of the, that exam is on 30 of assessment of need. If you go further, development of intervention strate strategies, action plan, 27%. Go even further, implementation of intervention, 25% of the exam. 
evaluation of intervention, 15% of the exam, and professional conduct, approximately 3% of the exam. So we're going to do a couple arrows back. And I want to show you a very interesting uh, item here on the Resna website. So say you're looking for somebody who is assistive technology professional. You can actually go to an ATP directory. Now, my course was how you become basically certified Resna. Resna is the certifying official for ATP. Once you are certified, you actually become in, you get into their directory, which this can be searched by first name, last name, employer, degree, city, and zip code. We're just going to do a quick search here. I have a friend. His last name is Mize. I'm going to click that in real quick. I'll do a return. And as you can see, Jonathan Mize, National Seating Mobility is his employer. He's actually in Indianapolis, Indiana. He is a certified professional. So this is just a basic overview of what it actually will take to, to sit for the exam of certified tech, uh, assistive technology professional certification. Not anybody can do it. It's in high demand. Uh, they have a shortage right now uh, to the point where they're actually having uh, assisted technology candidates. So people that are working in the field can actually have not quite the title, but they understand that they're working towards it. So that's something that the resident organization is working for. Now, the last thing I need to do is I need to bring up my references for this. And here's my references. It's basically, I strictly use the Resna website for all my information. Thank you for listening, and I hope everybody enjoyed this presentation.